Now for our final speaker, I'd like to introduce Allison Noel McGarrian. Uh, she is a music teacher in New York City, but she's also a certified life coach. She's a motivational speaker. Uh, she's an author. She's done a lot of things. But she's first and foremost a teacher. However, like many, many teachers, some which you might know, and she felt burned out. She got to a point where she didn't want to teach any again, teach anymore. So she's here tonight to share with us how she found her way back to her love of teaching. Why are you always so happy, Miss McGarrian? It's annoying, but I love it. You know, there's always that one kid that walks into your classroom with some sort of commentary. As the music teacher, I've always felt very lucky to teach a subject that so many kids found fun. When I became a music teacher in the inner city in Brooklyn, I realized it wasn't about the subject I was teaching, but it was about the students that I was serving. My students were struggling on a level that I couldn't even comprehend. So I decided to bring a mindfulness practice with breath work and meditation into my classroom. I showed the students a short anime clip explaining mindfulness and the energy centers throughout our body. Kids love anime, so it was a pretty quick sell to get them to meditate. They also discovered that controlling your thoughts and emotions was in fact a superpower and every kid wants a superpower. I had them write down that day exactly how they were feeling. And I told them, be as honest and clear as possible because you are the only one that's going to read that. So we turned off the lights, closed our eyes, put on a little bit of music, and I read to them a meditation for self-love that I wrote specifically for them. And as I read through this meditation, I saw something so beautiful all the energy in the room just started to calm. And at the end of that meditation, we went into a very simple breath work exercise. One hand on heart, one hand on belly. Inhaling deeply in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. When I scanned through that room, I saw something remarkable. I saw tears happy tears, sad tears, angry tears, but I knew in that moment that I found my purpose all over again. The spark was back. I knew I was exactly where I needed to be. I received the greatest gift that day. I loved myself again, and I reclaimed my love for teaching. So for the last 12 years, I've been commuting from Long Island to Brooklyn on the terrible Belt Parkway. If you know, you know, and if you don't, I wouldn't call it heaven on earth. By the time I got there, it would be an hour or more, and then I'd have to find a parking spot, which most days felt impossible. But I vividly remember my fifth year into teaching, parking the car one day, grabbing onto the steering wheel, holding it so tightly, taking a nice deep inhale, and letting out the most aggressive cry of my life. I had reached my breaking point. I was completely depleted before even walking into that building. I was literally running on empty, myself and my car, because I never seemed to have gas. How was I going to do this for 25 more years? Really, it takes that long to retire? See, at this point, I had already gone back to school and got my second master's degree in educational leadership to become a principal. And that was the last thing I wanted to do after finishing that program. I discovered that the politics in education are incredibly dark. And the weight was so heavy to do it all. The energy and the chaos was killing my nervous system. But I was a firm believer in fake it till you make it. So I got out of the car that day, wiped the tears off my face, put on a big smile because I knew that my students needed to feel seen and heard because I knew that I didn't. 
And shockingly, walking into the classroom that day, I received the most love I had ever felt from those students. It was interesting. It really made me look at myself. I did not love myself that way. And when I walked out of the school that day, I looked up at the sky and I said, universe, give me some answers. And the more that I slowed down, the more I did get the answers I needed. I was overdoing everything for everyone else. I wasn't living my life for me. So then I made this big epic connection. And then I was like, I'm not happy with my life overall right now. But I was having a hard time understanding why. I was living in my dream apartment on the beach. I made a decent salary. I recorded my own original songs and I was miserable. I noticed I was always trying to reach the next goal, the next best thing, almost trying to outdo myself every day and that wasn't it. I just didn't like the way I felt. Now see, I knew I was dealing with a broken system. There is nothing like teaching in New York City. The fight or flight is where most teachers end up and stop taking care of themselves to meet the system's needs. Now every day I was living in this survival mode and everyone around me was telling me it was normal and I was like, there's no way this is normal. No, I can't live like this. But I knew I could not change the system, but I could change myself. So that's when I realized I was really just trying to get validation from everyone around me and I had stopped taking care of myself physically and mentally. I was overweight. I was just trying to be understood. I was trying to get people to like me, but I didn't even like myself. So I started reading self-development books. I hired a nutritionist. I discovered breathwork meditation, and I started a journaling practice. There it was. My mind and body started to align, and I started to feel really, really good. Wow. Not only did I feel good, but I looked good too. So I was just owning that. And I wanted everyone to know, you can look and feel good for you, not for anyone else, not for a system. So the first thing I did was I brought these practices into my classroom because I knew my students needed this just as much as I did. So we started doing simple mindfulness practices and I saw them all transform before my eyes. That then led me to self-publish a mindfulness guide for teens during the pandemic. But that wasn't enough. I was like, I need everyone to know that you can look and feel good from the inside out and we all deserve that so much. So I created my own business called Motivating the Mindset, where I mentor many people today, including teachers, to fall back in love with themselves and create a life of their dreams. Over the last two years, over 300,000 teachers have left the profession due to burnout and disillusionment. This highlights the need for teachers right now in this new age of teaching to really start pouring back into themselves. See, teachers have to not be afraid. They need to stand up for what they need. They need to lean more into self-care, into self-reflective practices, and they need to take ownership without apology or guilt. Because when they advocate for themselves, that's when they become the best teachers. That is when they love being educators. So this is the thing. We all know this, that right now the world is struggling and when the entire world is struggling, that means it becomes contagious. However, by leaning back into humanity and really reigniting that sense of purpose of doing what you love to do will and ultimately become a domino effect. I started motivating the mindset to create a ripple effect, but not just for adults, for the kids. They are our future. They are our doctors, lawyers, scientists, and we need to nurture them now for a better tomorrow. We need to calm that chaos and bring in the peace. So 
Being a peaceful teacher isn't really what you're gonna find these days, especially in New York City. So when I started this new lifestyle and this new way of being, I had a lot of teachers and people asking me, what was I doing different? I even went as far as to go on social media and sing motivational rants from the terrible Belt Parkway. Live from the Belt Parkway. And I still do this every day. And I share all my tools and my little tips to help you change your mindset and view this perspective a little differently on the darkness of the school system. Now see, I know I can't do this alone. So that's why I'm asking teachers, educators, any profession, if just to fall back into why you love doing what you do. And one way of doing this is through a reflective practice. So teachers, I am asking you to write yourself a letter, reminding yourself of why you love being an educator. I want you to redirect your focus away from the politics, away from administration, and lean back into your soul. I want you to take yourself back to that time when you got that teaching degree, or to when you landed your first teaching job and you felt like you were on top of the world. Or better yet, when you have that moment in your classroom with a student that you know that you love to do what you do. Because if you felt that one time in your life, you can and will feel it again. You are the only one getting in your own way. Here's your reminder. Two, remember that you are the only one that can control your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions, and no one else's. So now it's time to quiet the noise and lean back into that passion and purpose of why you became an educator. See, no one says this better than Oprah Winfrey. There is no greater gift you can give or receive than by honoring your calling. It is why you were born and what makes you become most truly alive.